Good morning, possibly. I'm Master Goffrin, and this is Let's Play Eternal Daughter. Last time, we found Smurnol, and our new friend Zishu Lin told us to follow him to the Dungarga Senate to see if we can convince them to stop dealing with the Free Riders, whoever they are. However, someone stands in our way. let's just take a time out right here. It's Hume, it turns out he's a total badass. In fact, he's probably the main reason that those who have stuck with the game end up quitting. Terrifyingly, he has three attacks. The first is his drill. Our increased range lets us avoid it. Secondly, he can shoot bubbles which home in on you. Dealing with these is the key to the fight. Finally, there's his jump. You tend to get bogged down dealing with the bubbles and can get easily penned into a corner. Though the arena is quite large, you do lose ground very quickly, and the bubbles will keep coming. As I said earlier, dags are going to be vital. Human's robot itself is unaffected, but while it takes three normal hits to break them, the bubbles can be destroyed instantly. The key is to deal with the bubbles before they become a problem, so you can safely move underneath him when he jumps. Now, where were we? There's really three main hurdles to defeating Hume. Firstly, there's the fact that you'll probably try using the daggers almost straight away. Seeing that they don't work on him, you stop using them pretty quickly as well, and you probably won't realise how effective they are on the bubbles. Secondly, even when you do notice, the controls make it fairly difficult to accurately time your daggers to shoot the bubbles, and you really don't have time to miss them. Even a single miss exposes you to danger, either from the bubble itself, or not having enough time to move underneath Hume as he jumps. On top of that, you do have limited ammo, and if you don't do damage to him fast enough, you can easily run out. Lastly, there's the hit ratio. The drill, bubbles, and his feet all do 3 damage, so his body only does 2. That gives you around 2 to 5 hits, depending on your upgrades. Conversely, you need to hit him 55 times, or about 35 charged shots. And there you go, Hume handily defeated. I probably made that look easy, but I hope you can accept that it is in fact a total pain in the ass, and can easily be the last straw after the run up to here. For some reason, he dropped the hammer secondary weapon, which we'll definitely be needing. The hammer flies in an arc above you, making it handy for attacking enemies like the Iron Dragons. It uses up two of your secondary ammunition, and though it didn't mention it, it can also break through those blue blocks we saw last time. Anyway, onto the Senate.
Alas, poor Smyrnol, we hardly knew ye. We're being rather hurriedly ushered into leaving the area, however, I'm not sure anything bad will ever actually happen to you if you stay here. So yeah, those were the three riders. They claimed to be the sons of Baphomet, who, if history has taught us anything, is probably some kind of god. They did have sufficiently unique names and terrifying superpowers to support that claim, so I think that cements them as antagonists. In addition, we lost our only ally in the Dungaga, so it's back to just Mir and the Shulin for now. And of course, here's the heavy grunt, my nemesis. I finally actually interrupted him there. I go for the double, and of course get shot in the face. The bullets don't actually get destroyed when they collide with you, meaning that in some cases it's actually possible to get shot twice by the same bullet. It adds an additional danger to moving down in these sections, since you can also quite easily just walk blindly into a war machine. And of course, a heavy grunt. This time I have a cunning plan though. Since they always alternate their attacks, I just duck. Interrupting attack is kind of a side effect that I imagine wasn't really intended. The game engine is very event driven, to the point where it's difficult for it to store a lot of unique information about any one object. When the enemies decide to shoot, they start playing an animation, and then pretty much forget about the fact they wanted to shoot in the first place. All they know is that, if they're playing that animation, and they get to the end of it, or a particular frame, that they should shoot an object. However, the flash when they get hit is also an animation. Since objects can only have one animation on the go, you're either set up to prevent you from hitting them at all, or you're able to interrupt them. There are some other side effects to using the animations to govern events in this way. For example, if you use a rapid fire button to try and throw secondary weapons very quickly, it will use the ammunition, but it will still only throw one weapon as fast as the animation can loop around. As a result, you might throw 20 daggers, but use all 50 of your ammunition. Another, and this time beneficial example, is the backslide. Since the engine forgets you ever put the key combination in to perform the backslide after the event is triggered, the only thing it has to go on is your animation. As such, Mia's movement speed is modified depending on what frame of the animation the slide's in. Which is why when you turn around when you're sliding, the slides can behave kind of oddly. The engine and your user input are fighting over exactly how Mia's speed should be modified. Another direct and more useful side effect is that, should your animation become interrupted during the backslide, you won't actually get slowed down as you ought to during the later frames of the animation. Two good ways of interrupting a slide are falling down and jumping, and we can use the additional speed to reach the area we couldn't jump to in the last video. However, we can't get up here, so it was all for naught. While we're supposed to be heading up to the top of Blue Mountain again, now that we have a hammer, there's a legitimate reason to start going exploring, so let's go and do that. Our first stop will be the large blue wall that we encountered in the last video. And it seems the attack upgrade we got in the Dungaga city did increase our damage, we can now kill the mushrooms in a single hit. It seems like we have a game of hide and seek on our hands. Whatever that anklet does, I'm sure we want it. However, I'm going to leave that for the next video. Instead, I have something more interesting to show you with regards to Hume. If you were one of the people who found him relatively unbeatable, there are alternatives to cheating with memory freezing or editing your save game. I mentioned it takes only 30 or 40 charge shots to kill him, but charge shots are very slow. However, by hitting the jump button and the attack button at the same time, you can get the game's logic in a bit of a twist and have rapid fire fireballs. Obviously, using the glitches like this is cheating, however, I think Hume is a good subject for this and I am trying to show the glitches off, so. Using the charged shot in the normal fashion is an okay strategy for dealing with Hume. You do need to get lucky with his pattern though, since at the end of the arena you can often end up dying. A far less cheesy alternative to this strategy is to use the glitches to get more health and attack upgrades, which also make this fight a lot easier. And there you go, he even dies off screen. It took me about half an hour to perfect a strategy for beating Hume, so I ended up doing this to cool off. It worked pretty well. Anyway, next time we'll return to the status quo and actually do some exploring for once. <laughs>